Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Imam Muhammad, for having me here. And my daughter, Amin Abdul Rahim. <laughs> I should say one of my daughters. I'm a mother of nine daughters. And three sons. Yes, yeah, so 12 children. 12 children. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes, thank you so much. And the, oh, I almost forgot. forgot. Twi I should have people guess, maybe. No, 27 grandchildren. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, alhamdulillah. Yes, yes. And one on the way, another one on the way, uh, inshallah, inshallah. Yes, yes. And don't ask me to count how many boys and girls. I don't remember. <laughs> yes, but. Uh, Thank you, thank you so much, thank you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, you okay? Okay. Yes. I am definitely, you okay, baby? Okay, I am honored to be here um, because one of the things that actually made me become an advocate is because some of my children were having issues in school. And, um, the school would call and complain constantly. Uh, homework isn't being done when I knew that my child was sitting up all night doing homework. And uh, when I came home from work, I would stay there trying to help him do his homework. But every day they would complain. And it's not that the child doesn't want to do it, it's that the child is unable to do it. But instead of the school saying, how can I help you? Instead, they start penalizing the children and making the families feel like I'm doing something wrong. So I was a working mom. I worked for New York City Department of Correction. So sometimes I was working 16 hours. When I got home, my youngest son was always up waiting for me to do homework. So that might be 10, 11 o'clock at night. Finally, the school says, OK, we can test him and see what his needs are. But in the testing, I realized later on that they were just, again, trying to um, categorize him and not still give him what he needed. So eventually, I went to a meeting. They just told me, oh, we can do this. We can help him with extra reading. But I learned that wasn't enough. Because what happened is the child continues to fail. And then the school system, instead of, again, helping or giving the parents what they need, they, again, put the child back. So a child that's going backwards is not learning. So one day, at this time, I'm still not an advocate, but I know something is wrong because when I see my son, I don't see someone that's struggling. He can verbalize, he can talk, he can do all his needs. All of a sudden, they start saying he's misbehaving. So it goes from one thing, he's not academically learning, then he's misbehaving. So I was like, again, this isn't my son that I know. I go up to the school and I speak, and this school psychologist, I never forgot, because this is what made me become passionate. She tells me, well, your son is borderline mentally retarded. And that hit me, like I'm in tears. And I'm like, but now he's like in fourth grade and all of a sudden somebody's gonna tell you your child is borderline mentally retarded, but he doesn't show that? So that's the day I became an advocate and I learned everything about the mandates. And under federal law, this is a civil rights law that they have to help your child. Not just put them back, not just penalize them. That means you can get private school, you can get tutoring for them to pay for it with specialists on the outside. So once I learned that the DOE is incumbent on them to educate your child, they can't blame you, they can't blame the child, they must federally, and this is the law, so what I started doing, once I learned that law, I took them to hearings. I learned how to do the hearings. And that means a hearing officer is going to decide and tell DOE that they have to pay for private schools. Some of these schools are $30,000, $90,000 a year. But if your child needs it, you can get it. So I started attending meetings and started educating parents. So when you go into meetings, it's usually four, five, six people in Department of Education, one parent. And of course, they're gonna make you feel like you're the worst parent in the world. Why aren't you teaching your child? But they're supposed to teach your child. So once I learned there's so many civil laws that can protect you, even when you go to college, 
on the American with disability in the child or now you're a young adult. If you need something, they have to provide it. That means technology, computers, um, any types of books that they need, uh, any schooling. Um, some of my grandchildren now go to a school, they have a pool that they learn how to swim. They learn music. They have to have a specialist to teach them. And it has nothing to do with the intellectual ability. Usually children that are extremely gifted fall through the cracks, because you can usually see the ones who maybe need or, or maybe need more help. But the ones that are extremely gifted in certain areas, but failing in another area, they continue to penalize them. But if, even if they have a high IQ, which is the case of a lot of my children and grandchildren, they still means that you can get things that they need for the DOE to pay for it. So like I said, this is my passion. I've done lectures in um, Staten Island um, College. I go out to schools to make sure, usually when kids are acting out in school, right away they think, oh, they're bad, and they want to suspend them. But that's against the law too. If your child is getting suspended every minute, you're supposed to go in and write a letter and let them know, my child cannot be suspended anymore under federal law. What are you doing to stop the suspension? And you can ask for, every, for them to pay for specialists because sometimes um, your insurance doesn't cover it. So I help the families write the letters. I had help them go to hearings. And we, I have won, thank God, for so many parents. Their children are in private school. They're getting all the specialists that they need. So like I said, I am so grateful to be here because people aren't aware of it. I wasn't aware of it, you know? So now that's what I do. I go out and speak. I help the families from A to Z, whatever it is that they need. I go to meetings, I, do, I go to state education complaints. If your child has a, a need and the school is aware of it and they're violating your child's rights, you can write to the special education department and say that their civil rights are being denied and they have to do an investigation and come in and make sure that the school is not violated. I don't care if it's a principal, I've had principals that were fired. Love doing it and I will continue to do it until the day I die. So thank you so much.